Bank earnings, profits fell sharply at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. Meanwhile, Fed officials are gearing up to speak on the economic outlook for the year as the central bank leans towards a 25 basis point rate hike in February. We're here to discuss as Waddell Associate CEO David Waddell. Good to see you. So we know that with every positive data point, at least that signal that the Fed might be starting to take its foot off the gas, we saw the markets rally. But where are we now in this conversation? Uh, well, good morning. Thanks for inviting me on. Uh, this conversation is going to evolve, but it's going to be predicated on what's going on with the inflation data, right? And so we'll get unemployment numbers once every month. Along with that, we'll get average hourly earnings, and that will dictate policy. But the communication from the Fed has to continue to be you know, suppressing for the markets because they, they use communication as a policy tool. And right now they're trying to get inflation down. So I hear the communication. They are all, you know, harmonic on it that, you know, we're going above 5%. It's going to be higher for longer, but ultimately the policy is going to be driven by the data releases. The most recent data release, of course, being friendly to the markets because earnings rose less than people expected. And that brought down the expectation of interest rate hikes, even introduced cuts at the end of the year. So then as people look at the correlation then between inflation and earnings, what are your expectations for the rest of the year? That's really interesting. So last year, earnings were probably up 5% and revenues were up 10%. So you can say that the earnings were really lifted by the inflation. This year, revenues are expected to only be up 3% and earnings are expected to be up 5%. Now, whether that's a true number or not by the end of the year, who knows? But what it tells you is that companies have benefited from inflation. Now they're not going to, which forces them to pull out their scalpels, start slashing costs, start slashing payrolls. And so this year will all be about cost cutting. Last year was all about pricing power. And you get to earnings you know, both ways, but one of them requires a whole lot more management sort of strength. So David, obviously there's a lot of noise out there, a lot of different data points that people are trying to follow, trying to make predictions. What are you focusing on? How do you get, sort through the noise to focus on what's actually going to be driving markets this year? Well, I spent a lot of time preparing for you this morning, and what drew my attention was the Chinese GDP release this past week, and then the fact that, you know, the natural gas storage facilities are 86% full in Europe, and it looks like they might even skirt a recession. So in the U.S., we've got a Fed hell-bent on putting us in recession, but in China, you know, you've, you've got reopening growth. Europe looks more towards Asia. You know, it could be that actually that economy in the third quarter grew faster than ours. Most people don't know that. PEs are low, expectations are low, the dollar's rolling over. And so the offshore trade that's outperforming this year could be in its early stages. And so while the U.S. data points matter, I would remind your viewers not to ignore the international data points. And some of those international data points are decidedly favorable. And a lot of these growth predictions that we're seeing are really predicated on the pace of China's reopening. Is there anything that you think we're missing in the picture when we look at this rate rising environment that we're still in? But we also look at some of these geopolitical issues and China's reopening as well. How should people be viewing this this period? Well, right now, if you look at the sentiment surveys, both among you know fund managers, investment advisors and retail investors, we're going into recession, earnings are going to fall, market's going to fall, test new lows, bottom in the first half and go up in the second half. Now, consensus is not always wrong, but that's a whole lot of people involved in one trade. And so what's happened so far year to date, and I'm really frankly encouraged, I know the bank earnings, specifically Goldman Sachs, were lame today, not a surprise. Um, but I'm encouraged that the market is really kind of holding in around this 200-day moving average level at this 50-day moving average level. If, if earnings this quarter don't end up negative or they end up being less negative than people think, then that might signal that companies are up to the task to handle sort of a growth slowdown in the first couple quarters of the year. So I think people are probably too bearish, which leads to this rapid rise in markets as as you know, seller's remorse sort of sort of brings in. But we still got a lot of people that are saying, nope, we're going back to retest the lows. What if we're not? 
I mean, and we still we'll still see the VIX is under 20 at the moment. A lot of people wondering what's going to happen with the consumer. You have rent inflation. You know, they, we're looking at even things like the price of eggs. Inflation coming down, but not at the pace that a lot of people want to see. Where do you see opportunities in this environment? I think this is a very different scenario, maybe as the Fed tries to engineer a little higher unemployment. And here's why. When you had COVID, everybody just fired relentlessly, right? We went to an unemployment rate of 22% overnight, and that was frontline workers. Now we're past that. It's been very difficult for companies to pull in frontline workers. They've had to pay them more. And this time they've got to reduce staffing levels. They may take a look at some of their executive staff, some of their administrative staff, some of their corporate staff, and say, we've got you know, we could streamline operations here. There's way too much corporate bloat. So you could reduce staffing levels at the top of the pyramid rather than the bottom of the pyramid. And that would do a lot actually to bring wage pressures down. So I'm not really expecting some sort of employee purge like we normally see in a recession because this one is no surprise they've had plenty of time to think about it and so we may see more of a decrease in wages per unit of unemployment than we've seen in the past which would be hugely productive so if you look out you know into 2024 earnings 250 on the s p up from potentially 200 this year to me that's because there's being operating leverage built into the models as companies get more efficient, the economy gets more productive, because we've had a whole lot of time to prepare for this coming downturn. Indeed, a long transition indeed. Waddell and Associates CEO, great to have you. David Waddell, thank you for joining me this morning.